Welcome viewers. In this video, we are going to do design of substation gantry foundation in Eurocode. This is stage 5 out of 7. In this, we are going to do design of bottom slab for the gantry foundation. These are the various stages we got seen and that up to 4 stages we got seen already. Overview of calculation, foundation and soil parameter, loads and load combinations, stability check and the anger bolt design we got seen already. These video links are provided in the description. Now we are going to do in this first fifth stage as a design of bottom slab. Next two stages are punching and one way shear, design of a pedestal. Let me go into that Excel calculation. In the screen you can see an Excel sheet which is about to explain about the design of bottom pad. For design of bottom pad we need to calculate the bending moment. For that we need to consider the ultimate load state, load combinations maximum bearing pressure so this calculation we already did for candy tower foundation towards the stability of the foundation in stage 3 of this series so here we are considering the maximum of ultimate limit state load combinations bearing pressure and the downward pressure we already know that it is due to the sulfate of the concrete and the soil there will be some resistance of upward pressure from the downward side so for that we need to consider 25 times 400 0.4 is a thickness of the raft plus 18 is a soil density in kilo newton per meter cube multiplied with the height of the subsoil in the foundation that is 2.5 meter is the total height which we already seen in the stage 2 so 2.5 that we need to deduct this 400 mm in order to find the effective depth of the soil filled over the raft or the bottom pad so this is what we got arrived here so here the 25 is the density in kilonewton per meter cube of concrete 25 kilonewton per meter cube into the thickness of the raft we already know that it is 400 so this thus that downward pressure due to pad and soil is arrived which is 47.8 and a net upward pressure we need to calculate is nothing but delta max minus delta d so this is a net upward pressure which will cause the bending movement at the bottom pad where we need to find out the reinforcement requirement so before that we need to calculate the unsupported length in y and x direction for both mid span and the end span so here in the plan you can see in the right hand side so we are already having the 5 meter by 3.5 meter size of bottom raft having the four pedestal at the center to center distance of 3 meter and 2 meter respectively so in that there is a due to the upward pressure so this is a cross section of the width direction b equal to 3500 so in that we are having two pedestal so that due to this upward pressure this mid span will subject to upward bending movement and both the edges are subjected to downward bending movement with a linear slope so here it is a parabolic slope similar like for the longer direction the bending movement occurs mid span bending movement is upward due to the downward pressure and due to the support condition so here the bending movement will this will bend downward so these are the things so we need to consider the overhanging length for all, all the four stages so here first one is for the shorter side that is y direction bx equal to nothing but b is a total length here the four uh, 3.45 meter minus the center to center distance we need to detect it so that it will be like 3.5 minus 2 minus for the 
edge span we need to detect the column width also so we have considered 600 by 600 mm of column sizes so that we need to detect and the whole thing we need to divide it by 2 it means we will be getting one side of the overhang distance it means we need to calculate this distance edge of the column to the edge of the bottom slab so this distance is 0.45 so similar like we need to calculate for length direction also so length direction is 5 meter so 5 minus 3 meter is a center to center distance minus 300 sorry 600 we are getting 0 0.07 so it is nothing you can calculate here So this will be 0 0.7 and for unsupported length for upward bending we can directly consider the CX and CY respectively. So it is 2 meter and 3 meter which we are already assumed in the foundation and soil parameter. So these are the consideration of unsupported length we need to do in order to calculate the actual bending moment in all the direction. So next one is a downward bending moment we need to consider. For this we need to consider as a cantilever portion. So for both X and Y direction you can see only the cantilever portion we need to consider. So the for cantilever or fixed cantilever we are having the formula as a WL square by 2. So that formula we are going to apply here. So here that delta NU is the net upward pressure into BX is the shorter side unsupported length for cantilever span so that is 0.45 so applying this into this equation we are getting 17.87 kilo newton so this is nothing but that 176.47 into 0.45 square divided by 2 so that is the equation applied here similarly like for longer direction also same principle we are going to follow only the instead of bx it will be lx lx square divided by 2 into delta n u is a cantilever movement for the longer span so it means this pink color bending movement span of lx next one is unsupported bending movement in y direction so this is upward direction upward bending movement in that upward bending movement you can see here in the green color is a bending moment in shorter direction that is y direction so here we are applying the simply supported beam concept wl square by 8 so here snu is a net upward pressure and lx so here that cx we can consider 2 This is actually taking from the first sheet but you can directly link here itself so that it is easily understandable. So similar like for longer direction also we need to consider this only the instead of CX it will be CX, CY. So that equation is simply separate equation we need to consider WL square by 8. So this is what the method to arrive the bending moment for all the four directions so that bending moment diagram will be like this in all the directions so we are getting four bending moment one is shorter direction cantilever that is downward bending and a shorter direction upward or simply supported movement longer direction shorter or downward bending movement and a longer direction upward or simply supported movement 
so these are the four movement we have calculated now accordingly we need to find out the reinforcement for the same so for that compressive strength of concrete is based upon the concrete grade which we have already assumed in the stage 2 of this series so it is c30 by 37 for that concrete grade compressive strength of concrete tested in a cylindrical is 30 mega pascal partial safety factor we need to consider as per euro code 1992 part 1 section 1 so in the right hand side you can see that en code 1992 part 1 section 1 version 2004 so in this we are going to find the table 2 so page 26 can be referred so table 2.1 n stating that for persistent and transient load combinations the factor we need to consider for reinforcement steel is 1.15 so that we are considering here 1.15 and a design yield strength of the reinforcement we need to consider this is nothing but fy divided by gamma s so gamma s we already arrived here 1.15 and fy we already knowing that it is 500 so here that grade of steel we have assumed already in stage 1 sorry stage 2 in this series it is b 500 b so here that 500 is nothing but the yield strength of concrete sorry steel so it is 500 so it is 500 divided by 1.15 is 435 mega pascal so we can consider concrete cover as a 50 mm so that the effective thickness of bottom pad is nothing but 400 divided by sorry 400 minus 50 mm in terms of meter it is 0 0.35 meter so next one is we need to consider the minimum reinforcement according to the table 3.1 of en 1992 for that page number 31 we need to go so before that we need to find out the value of FCTM so FCTM is a mean value of axial tensile strength so for that the equation is given in table 3.1 so you can find here in the right hand side of the table FCTM equal to 0 0.3 into FCK 2 by 3 so with the same equation we are applying here and find that FCTM is 2.89 so next one is as per class 9.2.1.1 of EN 1992 we need to find out the minimum reinforcement requirement for that page number 144 we need to look so in the right hand side you can see that in the pdf the page number 154 setting that minimum and maximum reinforcement areas so here that equation is given as AS minimum equal to 0 0.26 into FCTM divided by FYK PTD. So here that FIDD is the FYK. So the definitions are given here you can look. And 0 0.26 into FCTM divided by FYK. So here that PT is a for concrete slab we can consider 1 meter that is 1000 mm and T effective is already we got calculated as 350 mm or 0 0.35 meter so applying all this in the equation we are getting 605 square mm of steel reinforcement area so this is a minimum steel reinforcement area we need to consider also in that same code in the same class 9.2.1 it is stating that the minimum reinforcement should not less than 0 0.0313 BD so that also we have calculated here 0 0.013 BT into TF so applying that PT is a thousand mm and a TEF is a 350 mm and multiply with that 0 0.0013 
we are getting 455 square mm so that minimum reinforcement we need to consider is a maximum of these two so 605 is the minimum reinforcement we need to consider so no case this minimum reinforcement the actual reinforcement should not less than the minimum reinforcement and maximum reinforcement also given the code under the same page so you can look here in the bottom so 0 0.04 is a maximum reinforcement so here the 1000 is a PT and the TEF 350 mm so applying this we are getting 14,000 square mm so no case the reinforcement should not go beyond this 14,000 square mm because it is a maximum reinforcement criteria we should follow then now we need to calculate the reinforcement here we need to calculate the required reinforcement uh, to be provided and uh, these are the equation we need to do it this is nothing but the k is nothing but the liver arm factor and z is the liver arm fact liver arm distance so with these two finally we need to consider we need to calculate the area of a tensile reinforcement required so let we look into that k equal to m divided by b into t e f f square into f c k so here m is a moment b is nothing but 1000 mm and t effective is a 350 mm f c k is a concrete character strength of in comparison so these already we are having so applying all this in this equation like here the moment is 17.87 so that we are converting into Newton mm which is already in kilonewton meter so multiplying with 10,000 multiplying with 10 power 6 and again that is divided by B is a 1000 mm which we already considered because it is a slab then we need to consider per meter reinforcement calculation method so per meter means 1000 mm so we are dividing those with a 1000 mm and this is 350 mm is a T effective that square into FCK is a compressive strength of concrete is 30 mega Pascal so with this we can able to find out the liver arm factor and the liver arm factor should be considered while calculating the liver arm distance so here it is t effective divided by 2 into 1 plus square root of 1 minus 3.53 into k which should not less than 0 0.95 of t effective so t effective is a 350 mm so likewise this equation is found so here you can see that 350 divided by 2 plus 1 plus square root of 1 minus 3.53 into k is 0 0.05 here for bending moment m1 which should not which should be less than 0 0.95 so if it is less than 0 0.95 into 0 0.35 then we need to consider the same equation else we need to consider 0 0.95 into effective thickness so that is what here made so by applying this we are getting z value as 332 so this is a liver arm distance where the reinforcement effective reinforcement should be placed or the tension high tension is acquired so 332 mm so that area of steel reinforcement is nothing but m divided by fyk into z so here that uh, m we know that it is a bending moment so 17.87 by converting this kilo newton meter to newton mm we need to multiply it with a 10 to the power of 6 so that we have done here and that as per this equation 
moment divided by f i k so f i k we know that it is 437 mega pascal into z value is 332 so this equation we got applied and moreover this should not less than the minimum reinforcement so that's why we are considering that whichever is uh, greater that minimum reinforcement is greater here i think that consideration so because you can delete this and find out which one which is the actual reinforcement requirement so here you can see that only 123.7982 square mm is required as per this moment and the tensile zone requirement but actually we need to provide that minimum reinforcement so this case we have considered like minimum reinforcement as a reinforcement which is to be considered as a provider reinforcement directly the same kind of calculation we need to do for bending moment 2 also so that is downward bending moment at a longer span direction here only the bending moment value will vary and the formula remain same so instead of m we need to change that m2 so here also the same thing the formula is effective thickness divided by 2 plus square root of 1 minus 3.43k so for all the four moment we need to apply the same cases so by doing so the area of reinforcement we are getting in a three form only in the mid span bending moment is heavier from this moment calculation you can see so that's why we are getting the more reinforcement compared to the minimum reinforcement here so even in this case in this case also we can remove and directly look into that uh, what is the exact reinforcement required for this so here it is 612 is required and this side it is 1376 is required in the longer bending moment direction and the, at the mid span that means top reinforcement is heavier so now we need to find out the provided reinforcement so for the side side bottom we are considered 12 mm at 150 mm spacing so this 150 mm is calculated by this actual reinforcement or area of tens uh, tensile reinforcement required so it is nothing but how this is we are calculating is so we know that pi into d square is a total amount so by d square by 4 is a area of one rod so we need to find divide this with the total area of tensile reinforcement and multiply it with the thousand that is one meter so we will be getting 186.94 so we are reducing that to 50 mm round off so that it is coming 150 mm is a spacing so here you can see that it is made as a 50 mm or else we can have it as 10 instead of 50 mm round off so that it will have 100 and instead of 126 we can go for 120 so similar case here also instead of 50 we can consider 220 now so likewise this spacing is calculated according to the various reinforcements suppose for here if it is it is 20 mm here in the reinforcement for the long side top so for that 20 mm with this it is 228 so we can provide 220 here and the actual reinforcement is calculated based upon the diameter of the 
rod with the spacing of the center to center distance of this reinforcement so it is 628 for all these three cases which are greater than the required so hence it is safe so here also 1428 which is also greater than the 1376 as required so hence safe so for the distributor bar we can keep as a same as a minimum reinforcement so for that minimum reinforcement is considered here 605 mm so according to that uh, distribution rod also to be placed at 12 mm at 80 180 mm center to center distance so after cal calculating the provided reinforcement we can assign this uh, detailing so here that 81 is a shorter side bottom reinforcement which is showing here in the pink color is a 83 which is longer side bottom reinforcement and 82 is a shorter side top reinforcement 84 is a longer side top reinforcement and all the other reinforcement we can consider as 85 that is distributed for bars so that color indication in red color are the distributed bars so as per the bending moment diagram you can see here that uh, simply supported mid span are subject to upward movement where the tension occurs only in the top side of the raft so that the top reinforcement to be provided here and for the edges which is overhanging side the reinforcement should be provided in the bottom as per the moment calculated so that is what provided here 81 and 83 are in edge side that is overhanging span reinforcement and the mid span reinforcement are kept in top reinforcement and finally the red color are the distributor bars so with that the design of bottom reinforcement get completed thank you look description for more related videos subscribe to this channel for more updates thank you